there, Karen Roby and Ed Bott. Glad to be back together again here for ZDNet. Ed, so good to see you as always. It has been uh, it has been a little while. I'm happy to be back here. Yeah, most certainly, and, and from our homes, of course, still here in lockdown, but we're talking about important stuff, computer security. We can never talk about that too much, specifically locking down your Microsoft accounts. Yes, indeed. Uh, and this is a, a, an article that I was really excited to do because I went back and looked, and I've been writing about various security options that are available for Microsoft accounts for years now, but everything's been sort of scattered in different places, uh, this option here and that option over there. So I decided to take and tie this all together into a single article that has seven steps that you can take to lock down your Microsoft account, a really important thing for uh, people who use a Microsoft account to sign into Windows PCs or who, uh, who use it for Office 365, Microsoft 365, home and, um, and personal accounts. Now you don't have to do all seven steps. What I've done in this article is to basically break the security profiles down into three groups. First of all, there's a baseline security. Baseline security says, let's get you a nice strong password and then let's turn on what's called two-step verification so that if somebody does happen to steal your password, uh, they have to go through an extra step that only you know about. Uh, so to keep, keep you from getting that account hacked. So that's the baseline. The second level is, um, you know, if you've got valuable stuff there in say your OneDrive account associated with uh, Microsoft 365, things like your tax returns and bank statements that you've scanned in, or if you're using uh, an outlook.com address as your primary email, and, you know, so that somebody could use that to reset your bank account uh, password, you know, then then you want to you want to take it to the next level, and that will involve uh, the uh, Microsoft Authenticator app, and also a couple other steps there for setting up different verification options. And finally, the uh, what I call the maximum security option, which is adding uh, a hardware security key, and that's the one. It's um, it's a little bit inconvenient. Uh, especially for people who don't keep their, their keys around all the time. But it's the one, having that physical device there basically means that, you know, unless somebody has that, uh, has that physical security key, they can't sign into your account. So, you know, that's the way I've organized it here. And uh, now what I'd like to do is walk you through those seven steps. All right, excellent. That's the, the beauty of being able to uh, share a screen here and you can actually walk us through this, Ed. Take, all right. take off right there. All right, uh, so the very first thing that we want to do is uh, create a new strong password. And so to do that, you're going to need to go to the Microsoft account security page. Now I've got the, uh, the link for this in the article, but this is what's called the security basics page. Um, just a few boxes on there and I've drawn a big red arrow to show the, uh, the place that you're going to click to change your password. That's a very standard looking page. You enter your old password and then you enter the new password in there. By the way, as long as we're on this page, I'm gonna point out the thing that's just to the right there where it says advanced security options because I'm gonna come back to that in just a minute. But after you click that button, you're going to uh, uh, put that new password in there. Now, one of the things that I strongly recommend is that you create a brand new, strong, unique password there. and instead of just trying to make something up, either use your password manager utility or go to a, an online tool like the one password strong password generator here or the equivalent from LastPass. And that you can use uh, to generate a, a random password like the one shown here, or you can have one that uses uh, words. You can you know, have three or four words there, you know, correct horse battery staple is the classic one, uh, or you can, you know, and you can choose how many characters you want, um, whether you want numbers and symbols and such, then you copy that to uh, your clipboard and you paste it in to the change of password page. Once you've done that, you've got a secure password, strong password that you can guarantee has never been used with another account. Don't use it for anything else, just use it for your Microsoft account, okay? Step two. Uh, 
print out a recovery code. This is a really important thing to do because uh, some of the steps that we're going to take here later on are going to make it so that it's difficult for someone to call into Microsoft and, uh, and reset your account. And that's on purpose. You don't want somebody to be able to socially engineer their way into your account. So um, I've got the link on that advanced security options page, the one that I just mentioned. Go down to the bottom of that page um, and click the get a recovery code option. It'll pop up a box like this. Uh, they give you one code, print it out, put it in a safe place like a you know, a locked file cabinet or, you know, your, your desk drawer all the way in the back there, someplace where you know where it is, but nobody else can find it. Um, by the way, uh, if, if anybody's thinking that they can hack into my account with this recovery code, don't even try. Each time you uh, create a, you generate a new recovery code, it invalidates the old one. So this is one of the old ones that, that doesn't work anymore. That's it. That's a good feature, Ed. And glad you're it, it, it really is. I, I, you know, I just wanted to save uh, any, you know, would-be <laughs> hackers out there a little bit of, uh, a little, little bit of work. Uh, step, th step three is to turn on two-step verification. This is that advanced security options page that I told you about. It shows all the different uh, verification options that you've set up. There's a change password uh, box there. Uh, there's the phone number and email addresses that are associated with that account where you can get codes sent to you. But down there at the very bottom is a, a little box and you can see that I've turned on two-step verification there. The big word on there says that I did that. Um, if you see, uh, if that says off, then you can click turn on. That'll walk you through uh, a couple steps fairly painless process. It will, uh, it will offer to give you some app passwords and it says you need them for your uh, iOS device or your Android device. But if you're using a modern smart, smartphone with an up-to-date operating system, you don't need to worry about those, uh, those app passwords. Uh, this will, um, you know, but this will, now the next time you sign in for the first time on a new device, you'll, uh, you'll have to get uh, an extra code uh, from your phone or from uh, an email that's sent to you, and you'll have to enter that. That's the two-step verification, also known as multi-factor authentication. Okay, that's step three. Step four is to, now most people when they set up a Microsoft account, uh, Microsoft says you have to set up, in, in addition to your email address, you have to add another uh, form of verification. So that's usually a phone number. So that's, that's what they use to send an SMS text to you. What I recommend doing is adding a secure email address, preferably a business email address, not something free like Gmail or Yahoo. Um, and so you, uh, you click the little box there that says that you wanna add a new form of verification. You click email a code there. You enter your business email address. You'll get a code there. You, you enter the code. Uh, to confirm that that verification option works and boom, you're done. Now you have an extra form of verification there that you can get. And that's as part of your two-step verification. If you can't get a text message, if you can't uh, take a phone call because of where you are, um, then you can have uh, this code emailed to you and uh, you've got that extra verification set up there. Okay, that takes care of most of the, uh, the, the easy stuff. Um, but now we're going to get into the, uh, the stuff that's a little trickier, but really locks down your account, okay? Uh, setting up Microsoft Authenticator. Now, I'm not going to walk through the whole process of setting this up here. It's fairly straightforward. You have to uh, download the Microsoft Authenticator app for your iPhone or for your Android device. And then you have to go to that same box there where it said, add a new form of verification. You click the, um, the option to use an app. Uh, it, it gives you a link to download the Microsoft Authenticator app if you want to. Um, and then once you've done that, you sign in to the Microsoft Authenticator app with your, uh, your Microsoft account email address and your Microsoft account password. That, uh, and then once you've done that, uh, you've, you've basically done everything you need to do. Uh, in the future, when you sign in for the first time on a new device, you'll get a prompt on your phone. And all you have to do is say approve 
and you're verified. If you sign in for the first time on a new device, one really cool thing about using the Microsoft Authenticator app is that you can do what's called passwordless sign in so that you get a slightly different prompt that comes to your phone. You have to choose one of three numbers. It tells you where the request is coming from and uh, assuming that you sent that request yourself and you know the number that's on your screen, you can uh, approve that request and then you sign in and you don't have to enter that password on your new device. It's a real time saver. Um, but the fact that that authentication prompt tells you where it's coming from is interesting because right before I got on this call with you today, I got one of those uh, prompts that popped up on my phone that said someone in Thailand was trying to sign in uh, to my Microsoft account on a new device. And so I use the option down at the bottom mm -hmm. that says deny because I'm not in Thailand right now and nobody that I know is in Thailand right now who should be signing into my Microsoft account. So um, in this case, that was a case of the uh, two-step verification working extremely well. Uh, okay, now that you've got the, uh, the different forms of verification set up. You've got a secure email address set up for yourself. You've got a recovery code printed out and stored in a safe place. And you've got the Microsoft Authenticator app set up. You don't need those SMS text messages anymore. And in fact, that's the weakest link in your Microsoft account. Um, the, you know, somebody can, uh, somebody who, you know, wants to, uh, hijack your account can call up your mobile provider and they can do what's called SIM jacking. They can socially engineer your mobile provider and tell them, oh, I lost my phone. I need a, a new SIM card. Here's my phone number. They have to know just a few details about you and they can take over that account or they could intercept the SMS messages coming to your phone, which is something that somebody can do. This is a particular risk for people who are in, um, you know, who are high value targets. You know, if you're, you're um, managing the, the accounting software for your organization, right? You don't want to have this as an option. You've got plenty of other options here. So what you do is you go to that advanced security options page, you expand the section there that says text to code and you click the remove button and boom, SMX, SMS text messages are no longer an option. Um, you still got plenty of other verification options, but this one isn't available. And so somebody who's trying to use the sort of standard online attackers playbook can't use that. And then step seven, the final one, and this is the most advanced one of all, is using a hardware security key for authentication. Now I have a couple of YubiKeys here. Those are USB devices. Uh, you set them up on your Windows PC or on your Mac. You, um, you insert them into the, the USB port, or actually in one case, like you can insert them directly into uh, my iPhone. Um, and then you, uh, you enter your pin, as, uh, as you can see in the prompt here. And then you touch the uh, little metal part of the hardware key, and boom, you're verified. Very, very uh, high level form of authentication because it requires you to have a physical device. So if you want the, the, the most secure form of authentication for your Microsoft account, what I recommend is basically pairing your authentication options down to as few as possible. This uh, hardware security key, the Microsoft Authenticator app on your phone, and a business email address, plus the recovery code that you've set aside. All of those are, they're really hard to hack and they're things that only you um, have access to. All right, and we're back out of that screen share. Um, Ed, some really great tips, I think, and, and putting them in order, like you said, will really help people walk through it. And as you mentioned at the beginning too, I think important to reiterate that they, people, not everyone has to do all seven steps, correct? Yeah, exactly. You could stop at the first three. I think the most important thing to do there is to turn on that two-step verification. Even if you're using SMS text messages, those are fine for people who are just, you know, if, if it's your secondary account, you're, you're not storing anything valuable in Office 365. Um, that's enough of a, of a speed bump 
uh, yeah. to put in front of a would-be hacker there that you don't have to worry about being attacked there. But the more, you know, the more important the stuff you do with that Microsoft account, um, the the further you should go in those um, in those steps. And you know, I keep my entire life there uh, in, you know, in places like OneDrive and Office 365. So for that, you know, I want the maximum security and I wanted to share some of those techniques with our readers today. Absolutely, and we're glad that you did. And we hope all of you will check those out there in Ed's full article on ZDNet. We appreciate you watching today.